Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching me as I explore the wide world of pens. And you see before you a bunch of parts and bits and associated with a large number of different types of pens. I have this little tube of silicone grease here, which comes with most of the Wing Sung piston fillers, vac fillers, and draw fillers. Then we have a bunch of sections, which look like they might work with uh, Wing Sung 601. And here's a feed, or, or more or less the ink collector. The feed would go inside of there. Then we have some nibs. These uh, nibs that Bobby Penn sells, they're branded full of wind and they have a large amount of tipping material on them. So I buy these whenever I make a purchase, add them to my cart, like I did a lot of these other bits. And that was the number six size or 35 millimeter. And then it also comes in a 28 millimeter or a number five size. This is the double broad, 1.5. And it also comes in a pilot style with the little wings on the back. So for your Metropolitan fans out there and, and other pens, you could also have that ground. Or just use it as is, as Alan showed in one of his videos. This is a nib. I'm not certain exactly how I got it. I have two of them. But it also is a number five. There's a decent amount of tipping material on it. It has that overlay, which is generally a dip pen type of thing because it holds extra ink there. And the way it's designed, I think this would be hard to fit into most of my pens because there's not enough room inside the section for that extra thickness. And last but not least is a medium Lamy style nib, which is interesting to be ground into a left oblique, a cursive italic. You could probably get a nice architect grind on there. So you need a little bit of tipping material to do those grinds, and, and this is a nice, easy way of doing it. I showed the links to these different items, so you can get an idea of how to find them on eBay. So why do I have all these things? Well, the sections, because I saw a video by ODE, where he replaced his black plastic section on his Wing Sung 601 steel flighter with a steel se section. And I thought that looked really cool, so I bought a steel section. And yes, the steel section cost almost as much as the pen. Unfortunate, but it's probably a difficult machining job, probably done by hand. Uh, <clears throat> limited supply. The stainless steel that they used was probably more expensive obviously than plastic or other materials that they might use and probably more difficult to machine so to me it's part of my investment in my uh, <clears throat> enjoyment of pens and expanding my amount of pens that I have and I love making franken pens I've been doing that for a while so this gives me an opportunity of frankenizing some of my wing songs so we're going to explore all these a little bit at least we're going to look at the 601s in the sections and see if it makes sense to replace that section. So you've seen this blue pen in an earlier video. And of course it's unique because it has a yellow section. Certainly not the most uh, appealing combination of colors, but I wanted something that was pretty intense and definitely you knew it wasn't sold that way. We're going to take a look at the effort it took to replace that section. And this is that uh, new flighter that I bought. So this one here has uh, gold trim on it. And there's gold ring there at uh, the bottom where the blind cap unscrews. So this uh, one here has been inked up and used daily since I got it. I really enjoy the nib. It has uh, 54th Massachusetts in by Noodler, so it's a nice permanent a uh, blue-gray type of ink that I've always enjoyed in, in a number of different pens. So this is the one I just bought, and I bought it specifically to replace that section with 
that stainless steel section. It certainly changes the look as we compare these two. You can get an idea of, of that. Yeah, that ring there is gold too. And so overall, how does that change the writing experience? Well, we're going to investigate that and show you. And we'll also show you the effort to replace the section. Stay tuned. So in using the replacement sections in some of my uh, 601s, so here's the latest one that I got in the Flighter series. It's all stainless. So I unscrewed this black section, which lined up very well with the nib. But when I screwed on the replacement stainless steel section, it's not lined up. Same situation. I know it's a garish color combination, but I wanted to go for an extreme. As you can see, it's not lined up at all. So in order to fix that, we're going to mark where the new section comes out and we're going to adjust the nib to match up. I just use a piece of a sticky label there to line up with the top of that new section. We unscrew the new section and we turn the nib assembly so it lines up with where that new section is going to screw in and we'll do that off camera. It took a few times but now I think it's lined up pretty well. So if you're going to be buying some interesting sections to Frankenize your 601s you have to go through a process to get everything to line up and if you want to put the old section back on it'll be the same process but you'll be rewarded with a unique pen when you're all done. Before we write with these two, I just thought we'd uh, look at the visual differences between the one with gold trim and the one with all brushed stainless and probably chrome plated or rhodium plated trim. Probably chrome because rhodium is more expensive. I just find the minimal amount of gold on this pen to just be nice, it just adds a little bit of touch to all sterling or all brushed stainless steel. And of course we have a gold clutch ring here. They did a good job at consistently maintaining that design theme in these two pens. And obviously this one's been frankenized with that stainless section. So this design which is kind of like in between a 51 and 45 as far as size goes. I think this feels fine. It posts deep, posts securely, and doesn't really change the balance much. That cap is relatively light compared to the weight of the pen. But let's see how this original nib, which I really enjoy, writes with that mass, 54th Massachusetts. These both write very similar. I think the nib here is slightly wetter. It lays down as just a little bit of a broader, darker, wetter line. Both of these have 54th Massachusetts in them, so same ink. 
They seem to dry pretty quick on this paper, which is Fabriano paper. But I have a confession to make. I don't like this metal section. It is slippery. It's more slippery than the body of the pen. But it certainly doesn't feel as good in the hand as the black plastic section does on the original 601. So I made an investment. I'm going to watch some videos to see what other people had to say about this section because I'm surprised that other people haven't mentioned it. I'll be back in a bit. So, two different pens, but yet they look very similar and share very much in common. They both have that pump draw filler system, which works excellently. They both have a great nib, in, in my opinion, based on how I enjoy writing. But the added weight, even though I do like pens weighted towards the nib, that slippery section just completely removes any of the advantages to that added weight. It adds about 8 grams to the pen in total. And post-it, I don't find the pen to be a, a bad writer. I think it writes fine post-it or unposted. I prefer unposted. And this does balance out the cap a little bit better if you post. But at the end of the day, is it worth $16? My guess is no. Am I glad I have it? Absolutely yes. I mean it just makes it a unique pen, makes it a different pen, and certainly complements my other 601 stainless steel pen. So one of the things to learn from this video is every pen is different for every user. That's why I find it amusing that people say, oh what pen should I buy? And they basically gave you maybe a price range or some minimal amount of information. And for anybody to recommend a pen, obviously they're just recommending pens that they like or they enjoy. And the odds of somebody enjoying exactly the same pen for exactly the same reasons that you enjoy it is pretty much zero. You can share some things in common. You can say, I like certain nibs, but if someone doesn't describe what they want to use the pen for or how they write with the pen or give you some indications of pens that they like that you can relate to, that you might own, that you can say, well, I know what you see in that pen or I see the same thing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my editorial comment on this video. Thank you all for watching. One of the disadvantages of these hooded nibs is sometimes you just lose track of the orientation on the paper, which is what happened here. But it starts up right away. The nib doesn't dry out. I mentioned in one of my other videos that I lost a pen for over six months. That was a 618, but it's a similar design, similar style. I uncapped it and it wrote like it had been written with just an hour ago. So that's an impressive feat. For a pen that cost under $20 in that case. This one's a little bit over $20. I'm not going to rate the pen. You can look at my rating on the video of the other version of this. It's a Franken pen. And that's why I don't think it deserves a rating. So hopefully you find a pen you love to write with. And it encourages you to write. And you do write. Doodle, draw, sketch. Many, many ways of using your pen. If we reach the end of this video, I hope all of you are safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying life to its fullest. If we reach the end of this video, we're going to say bye until the next one. Yes, I wrote the end twice.